everybody. Welcome to another episode of Between the Sheets podcast. I'm your host, Gayanne Bruno. It is the first, nope, it's the fucking third Friday of the month. <laughs> and we're on the first and third Friday of every month. Welcome. We're on time today. Thank you. We have beautiful people in the house. I have a beautiful guest in the house. I've known her for eons. She's part of the goddess group with myself and Cara and a million, probably 700 and other women um, in Los Angeles and afar. But um, thank you for joining us. I want to say, I hope everything's been well and safe with you guys. Um, we've been all busy and you know, I'll go around the room and we'll see, everybody will tell you what they're doing. Um, but as you know, you guys, I've been keeping busy with CBS. I'm so fortunate. I still have a position and it's actually crazy and I'm ramping up. Um, and I do do my between the sheets live chats since March 22nd. So thank you all three to 400 people that tune into that. That's phenomenal. Um, I talk a lot of shit, but obviously you like it. So thank you. And always <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching us. We have call-ins. We have still call-ins, even though we're Zoom. So um, I'll, I'll get to the show, but it's 323-524-2599. I know at some point somewhere on the screen, Kurt, who is manning the keyboards at the studio, will be posting up the phone number at intervals. Follow me on Instagram, QTE Brown, and always please like our Between the Sheets podcast page. So before I introduce our lovely guest, Stephanie Dumont, I'll go around the room so the ladies can tell you what they've been doing in quarantine. Cara Noble, how are you, my love? Oh, fabulous, thank you. I'm actually, um, I've got a, a vegetable garden going. I'm working on my mosaic. I may, you may or may not have heard, i doing the Taj Mahal. What the hell was I thinking? And I am, and it, <laughs> It's actually really coming on. I'm like working on, I'd say four square inches a day. I'm gonna have it finished by the summer. So, which is an extraordinary feat, frankly. Well, and it's okay, like, Cara, cause we're gonna be stuck <coughs> until August. So you've got some time. Please. No, 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 no. I need a hug, I need a hug. <laughs> um, also, um, gosh, I mean, here I am. What can I tell you? It's much the same, but I've also been busy. I've had quite a lot of voiceover work. Who, who knew? I'm still doing the vicious queens <laughs> and the sad, sad old ladies. And that's why I seem to be getting a lot of those. So there we are. I'm busy. Well, Is good. That? That's awesome. Yeah. And Delicia, we haven't seen you for a couple of weeks. So what have you been up to? I have been doing many, many projects around my home, and one of them is my front lawn, which I'm so super proud of, and <laughs> it took a, a weeded, gross nothingness after four years, and I, I, made a, I made a labyrinth, and I dug every rock out of the back by myself, and I'm just, I, I made a beautiful cactus area and planted some, I, I made it into like some, from weed to water beauty that doesn't need much water. So I'm super, super, super proud and restoring my vintage RV and just have so many different projects going on around the house. So is it an Airstream? Uh, it's actually a 1956 Dalton canned ham. So I have, I'm, I'm almost at the me. painting phase right now. So it's very exciting and a little bit scary, but I designed what I want on there and it's super unique and really cool. And I'm just hoping that it turns out half as good as what I had in my vision in my mind for my front, that would be amazing. So, and I'm sure it will be, but if you fuck up, once this is over, Mara can come over and help you. Out. <laughs> Thank you. And now we get to Mara, Mara Shane. How are you, sweetheart? Hi, I'm good. I, I was saying before we went on air that this is the most social interaction I've had in weeks and I love it. Um, I really thrive off being around my friends. And since I haven't been able to, it's been slow, boring. But um, I've just been, uh, honestly, if I'm gonna be real honest, nothing. This has been my life. <laughs> I don't have any projects. I don't feel creatively inspired to do anything oh, right now. Wait, you have a project. What? So there's, I, you I, for? I do have a Delicia's, um, painting that but I ran out of paint and I need to go get some new colors and I just what? saw the art, store. the art store down the way that I use is actually open so I'm gonna well, be doing cool. this. well thank you beautiful and I've seen you on house party but she's under anonymous so you can't find her and then no I'm not I'm under Henry my cat's name oh okay I thought, that, <laughs> you know, I thought, I thought when you when she would call me on house party 
And it's like, Henry, I'm like, who the fuck is Henry? <laughs> and I keep going, Henry wants to connect. Henry wants like, to connect. Oh my God, it's one of those weird men. And then it's like Mara. And I'm like, oh my God, all these aliases, Jesus Christ. Um, and, then we have, and then we have Kimberly Sanchez. You look stunning this evening, my beautiful friend. Thank, Thank you. you. I only get to put on makeup for all of you guys. Like, you Me know too. what I mean? No, any, no, that's not true. I went to work today. So, you know, I'm working still full time, but excitingly enough, I have some clandestine plans and I've been meeting secretly with the Small Business Development Center and I've been looking at loans and I will probably in the next few months be putting out some help me, fund me kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to open a restaurant. I don't know where and I don't know how. <laughs> it's kind of like the first one. I don't know where I'm getting the money. I don't know where it's coming from and it just comes. Um, something super small, something more like quick serve, not like the whole sit down thing. Cause I think life as we know it in restaurants is about to change. You know what I mean? I want to have like a little pantry area where you can buy your pantry staples and bottles of wine and, and great milk and, you know, farm eggs and just, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited. Wow. That's not, this has happened a lot in a week. <laughs> we were frolicking Cara's pool a week ago and we were sitting here going, what's happening? And now this is amazing. So congratulations. And by it the is. way, I know I've done GoFundMes and all that shit. So if you need help, I'll help you. <laughs> well, and it runs away, you guys. I mean, I went away. I, unfortunately, I don't, I feel terrible, um, whatever. Um, people will go out of business. A lot of restaurants are going to continue to go out of business. And I'm hoping to basically walk into something that's fairly well put together and, you know, kind of like a turnkey situation where I can just walk in, put my name up, maybe paint, rearrange, start cooking. Perfect timing. Awesome. Right. Yeah. Well, I just got to give a shout out before I introduce Stephanie. My friend Cliff, he does his own um, small batch artisanal roasting of coffee, and he sent me, he just started it again, and it's uh, the Sunrise Blend, and it, it's uh, like I opened the package, and if anybody likes coffee, you don't even have to like coffee, but when you <laughs> open it and you smell it, it's like complete mm -hmm. nirvana and heaven. So I'm sending you guys smell a vision, but it's Cliff's um, company, Coachella Valley. Oh God, I can't. Sorry, shit. I don't know what happens. You, you can't mess up because of the background screen. All right, whatever. Coachella Valley head. Coffee Company. Put it in front of your breath. There you go. Yeah. Coachella yeah. Valley Coffee Company. Yes. And it's it CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. So thank you, Cliff. That was very generous and sweet of you, and I appreciate it. And and thank you. So now, without further ado, oh, by the way, I got to announce because this is a huge thing. And I'm not bragging because I know a lot of people are like, shut the fuck up when you say this. I have lost so far 17 pounds since COVID. I've gained your 17. No. <laughs> and don't feel that I feel I've gained it too. I've gained 17 at least. So let's see. I'm going to read this. Um, and then because I can't remember it because I'm menopausal and it's so much stuff going on. So our guest for today is a goddess friend, a sister, Stephanie Dumont. Mm -hmm. She is the co-founder of Conscious and Carefree. Um, she, da, 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 da. She's the co-founder of a hit lifestyle blog and learning forum called Conscious and Carefree Formulas for Joyful and Productive Living. She hosts a weekly show on Awake TV Network called 52 Weeks to Living Conscious and Carefree. She interviewed me two weeks ago. Yeah. So, you know, look up, content, look up, what is it? AwakeTV.com? AwakeTVNetwork.com. And uh, yeah, 52 Weeks to Living Conscious and Carefree with my name. And you were on uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. So listen to two crazies talk about the four agreements. Um, yeah. <laughs> she's a leading executive and empowerment coach in San Diego for 18 years. She helps cutting edge clients turn ambition, talent, and objectives into profit and greater happiness. She coaches executive and her team, and there's a whole bunch of other shit that she does, but we'll talk about it instead of me reading it. Well, you, um, yeah. <laughs> so let's start out with, yes. how did you come up with living conscious and carefree? What does that statement mean to you? So um, I have a partner, and her name is Aviva Rabinovich, and Aviva is in Toronto right now, and I'm um, getting ready for bed, or else she would be with us on the show. And uh, Aviva is also part of this goddess community that you and I uh, are members of, 
And um, Aviva and I were at a gathering once, and um, I think it was her aunt. And every time she walked by the two of us, she would say something. She would say, oh my gosh, your energy is so powerful together. Oh my gosh, look at the two of you. You're just glowing. And, and every time she passed by, and then one time she passed by us and she said, you know, you're, she, I think she had a drink and she said, you guys are like careless and carefree like that. And um, at the end of that event, Aviva and I talked, she and I both were writers. Aviva is a, a business writer and a copyright editor. And she has a, a boutique practice of like 15 years. She's very successful. And I'm a writer myself. And uh, we had always wanted to start a blog. And we had a short conversation about the fact that we wanted to do this, but neither one of us wanted to work that hard or have it be stressful. And so we said, let's just kind of think about it and, and sit on it and we'll talk again in like a couple of weeks. Well, uh, a few weeks later, I got an email from Aviva that said, I'm ready to do this. Are you ready? And um, so the, one of the first things we did was um, we remembered what our her aunt had said to us of being careless and carefree, and we knew that she didn't mean careless. Um, and so we thought about we lo we're both carefree. We both love to live life fully. Um, we're both very adventurous. Um, we like to take positive risks. Uh, we like to travel, and we like expansion. We like internal expansion and external expansion and um, just living large in every way. Both she and I love life and we love to live big. And so we came up with the word conscious to go with carefree because both of us live a conscious lifestyle as well as living carefree in regards to um, being mindful and practicing mindfulness. Don't um, go down the points yet. Yeah, no, not yet. Not don't yet, do don't do it, don't do it. Stop. I'm not gonna do it yet. <laughs> So, uh, so consciousness to us is extremely important in life. Uh, it is, it's, it's part of my life's work, uh, as well as teaching people to live carefree uh, as well. So, um, so what it means to me is just living life fully. It's like living big and loving and like, you know, it's that, it's that saying, like when you, when you finish at the end of your life, you don't want to come in and, and be all perfect and, and, you know, everything is great, but you want to have like, you know, you come sliding in and you've experienced everything you can, you've squeezed every delicious moment out of your life that you can. And, and that's what conscious and carefree means to us. It's like go big. What is it? Do, go big. Go or go big or go home. Go home. That's it. Yeah. Well, we go I'm big. Just we, go big here. we go big here on between the sheets. <laughs> so you came up. I mean, as we were talking, as as Steph and I were talking, and you know, like I said, we go to the goddess camps. We talk about a lot of stuff. But this is a very interesting position that we're in, being sort of flipping the switch and actually concentrating on each other and mm -hmm. talking about what we've done. Um, you know, we came up with some points about living a conscious and carefree life. Like you said, love life, live big. So um, we'll go down the points. You guys aren't familiar with it because you know how I love this to be improv with all of you ladies, because I want, I, want, I want improv too. So the first one, oh, cheers. Is this like happy hour? Cheers, Hi, everybody cheers. drinks. Um, cheers. I'm, not, I'm not drinking anything tonight. I, I well, I'm sorry anything. to hear that. I'm not drinking. Um, it's better off that way. Trust me. Okay. Um, number one, start where you are yourself yeah. as a priority, build a quality of life. So why don't you briefly just explain and then I'll let the crazies uh, chime in. I, I think they're the beauties, but um, oh, no, you don't know them as well as I do. <laughs> well, how wonderful. Um, so starting where you are just means that not to worry about where you've been. Um, we've all had pasts and we can choose to let our past define us or not in any moment. So you can just start where you are right now. And um, we are in different places than we were two months ago or even six months ago, uh, especially with everything that's going on right now. Um, you know, obviously our environment has changed radically and that means that we've changed radically. So start where you are today. And um, the second part of that was, um, you know, making yourself a priority because we have a habit in our society of putting everything before ourselves and then taking care of ourselves last. 
And, um, you know, I would like for us to receive the fruits of our labor and enjoy, you know, the, the, the joy that we're creating for others. So making ourselves a priority and, and then committing to that. That learns that it means learning standards and boundaries in regards to, you know, taking our care of ourselves as a priority. Perfect. So go so ahead. I'm going to stop right there because sure. you said my buzzword. What's that? I'm fucking trying to work on this shit. And, you know, I stumble and fall. Boundaries. Okay. Boundaries. Boundaries. Yeah, yeah, you don't have a problem with boundaries. Fuck you, Kim. <laughs> we love you so much. Thank you. Um, I do. I mean, but it's not about me. It's like, you know, like, first of all, it, let, let's go backwards. Make yourself a priority. Besides like boundaries, which I understand because, you know, again, and I've said it a million times on this show and on my live Facebook chats, because I was like, I struggle with boundaries. Um, mm -hmm. I struggle with, you know, respecting others' boundaries. Um, I'm trying, I try, I try, but because it's something I think that needs to be learned, because if you don't have it, it's kind of like you don't wake up tomorrow morning and go, okay, I'm going to respect my boundary. I'm going to respect others' boundaries because you can't respect others. And, and ladies, chime in. I, I think I realized with meditation is that you can't respect others' boundaries unless you have boundaries for yourself. Because if you don't know what the fuck boundaries really are or what it feels like, then you're kind of not cognizant if someone says it in a way, because like I sit there and I let people, I say like, I let people say, you know, I guess I don't have boundaries. So if someone says, if I say, Oh, don't do that. And then they do it. I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't get so mm -hmm. caught up in that. It's like, all right, that's who they are. I accept them how they are. And then I expect other people to sort of do the same for me, but that's not quite the case people. So in boundaries, how do you, Stephanie, as you talk to people and, and coach people, how do you talk? What's it, what is it about boundaries? How do you get people that have no boundaries? What's your advice to get boundaries or how do you help them to sort of learn to respect others' boundaries? So let me start by defining boundaries because for me, we all think we know what we're talking about here, but each of us have a different sense of what boundaries are. So in the coaching world, boundaries are behaviors that you hold others to. Okay, just very simply, boundaries are behaviors that you hold other people to. Look, I gotta take notes. Wait, not getting take notes. And the other, so standards, I'm going to tell you also standards are behaviors that we hold ourselves to. So people get them mixed up, they're confused, and they don't really understand. So behaviors are, again, you hold uh, their boundaries or behaviors you hold to other people, standards are behaviors you hold to yourself. Mm -hmm. And so in regards to boundaries, I usually say to people that we are, when we have boundaries, well, even when we don't, Gan, like you're saying, we're always teaching other people how to treat us. We are always, whether we're aware of it or not, if we allow things to happen that we say, I really prefer this not happen, or if you have an issue with somebody, can you just, you know, come to me privately and instead of, uh, you know, getting upset with me in front of a group of people, something like that. If you, you're always teaching people how to treat you. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I just, I have had so many interactions um, lately with contractors and stuff because I'm trying so hard and I warn these guys, right? And I'm likening this back to COVID. I tell them, you have to tell me when you're coming because I have an autoimmune disease and I'm on prednisone and I have to stay 10 feet away from you. So I have to put my sci-fi gear on. I tell them this <clears throat> and they show up and more than once, more than one occasion, I'm constantly walking backwards and they're walking towards me really fast. Even when I have a N95 mask and a face shield on, like I look like I'm right out of a sci-fi movie, but people are so <laughs> not used to it. They keep, I've had to tell two contractors, dude, stop. Right. I cannot have you this close to me. So boundaries, even though I have told them on the phone, I have made it very clear. I have this sci-fi outfit on, they just don't stop. It's like people aren't conscious about it. And that is my fear of going out into the world right now, honestly. 
So something you can do is to let people know upfront if you have certain immediate needs, especially when it comes to your safety, that you say to someone on the phone before they come I do. or as soon as they show up. And so that's what you can do is just let somebody know up front and then do exactly what you did. I mean, you handled it well. Um, and stepping back and just saying, you know, I made it very clear that um, I right now I'm feeling unsafe and, and I have health issues and I need to be protected. Um, another way you could do it is to send someone away. I mean, well, one guy even said to me, like, one guy even said, oh, my God, you make me so nervous. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not trying to make you nervous. I'm trying to protect myself, you yeah. know, so it's but this a time, this we're time, living in. This time especially causes a lot of weird things. We have a caller. So if I can take a break and let's see if we have a caller that actually stayed on the phone. Uh, they hung up. Well, screw them. Oh, um, so, so I was going to say that's more like physical boundaries, but I think what we're talking about is more like Personal. emotional well, spiritual both. Ba boundaries. Okay. Right? Well, I, always thought, I thought boundaries, and so maybe I'm the backwards one. I thought boundaries were things that we put in place to protect ourselves against, I don't know, harm or a uh, um, uh, abuse in some way or whatever bad people you know and that can be physical emotional in any sense yeah that's correct kim i mean it's just saying what i said a different way i well, mean you're establishing certain behaviors um so I, I can give you an example of something that cara was talking about in regards to um so i, I won't i won't hang out with people who gossip it's just not my thing i don't like it and I make it clearer to people. And I'm, I mean, I'm so clear about the standard I have that if I am in a group of people and gossip starts to happen, I, I might say something. I might say, you know what, you guys, I'm going to step out, right? Or I might say, you know what, I feel a little bit uncomfortable talking about this person because they're not here. And so those are setting boundaries. You make it clear. And it takes courage to it set does. boundaries, it, right? Yes, it is super courageous because you end up, especially if you have never like Gayan, like if you're not used to having boundaries and if you're not used to setting and laying them out, yes, it can really rock the boat with a lot of people. And, Absolutely. It, what, and what I was going to say is it's one thing to have boundaries. It's another to actually be able to, to, to hang in there until people start respecting them and then to cut people off if they're not respecting your boundaries. Because we can't control how people are going to act toward us. We can only right. set a boundary. And then we have to say, well, if they're just don't, if they're just trekking all over my boundaries, I guess I have to either leave or um, I don't know. But, you know. You can clarify. Me. Go ahead, Gan. No, but like for me, because I don't have boundaries, I just take it all on. I mean, and it's because, I mean, I don't know if it, it's, I mean. It's because I don't sweat the I don't sweat the big or the small stuff. I just don't. There has got to be something horrific, horrific, for for somebody to do to me for set up boundaries. Because I just I am that kind of go, and I never was. I probably was a bitch really younger. But like as I get older, it's like I don't sweat the small stuff. And I don't know if it's because I've been through tons of stuff in my life and I've seen things deteriorate and, you know, negativity. And I think I really do. I'm trying to focus in that positivity, in that thing. So for me, and again, this is changing. I have to change because obviously I piss people off a fucking lot um, without knowing it. And sometimes I do know it. And sometimes I'm like, well, I don't care. And that's not good. But, um, but I think it's, um, it's just, it's hard. It's hard because, and it's true. It does take courage because mm -hmm. When I was, I've been meditating about boundaries and I actually had to say something to somebody who, um, who like, uh, who it was it's somebody, I had to say something to somebody and it was really difficult. It's easy to call and leave the message or something, but to say it in person to somebody. And I just said, no, you know, I will not do that. I won't. And it made me uncomfortable to say that because I didn't want to hurt their feelings. Exactly. I didn't want to because so much in this world is based, so much shit is based on miscommunication 
yes. the right words to choose and the way you express yourself and the body language. And I am so caught up in that that I think I just suck it up and not have to deal with it because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. That's I like, would say mentally, that's not going to protect. It's not, that's not a way to live because you're not able to protect your emotional state when you just, and I mean, everybody has different scopes of what's going to bother them enough. Like you can let a lot of things go gay and, and I have learned to do so because growing up in my family, I didn't really have a voice. And in order to get along with everybody, I had to just do what they said. I had to agree with them. And I was also a people pleaser. So I was never able to set a boundary because I was so accommodating all the time. I would say doormatish. And then that's really difficult when you're with this people you grew up with. And then all of a sudden you have to have a backbone and you have to say, I don't want you do, talking to me like this anymore. You know, no, I won't go drop my whole life to go pick you up at an audition or whatever it is that, <laughs> you, I mean, know, it be. you know, the hardest thing about boundaries and Cara, I will get to you is um, work. It's really hard for me yes. to set boundaries at work because of the position that you're in mm -hmm. because of, you know, thinking of insubordination. Mm -hmm. So how do you state what you want or what your needs are or what's not right without crossing the line about, you know, pissing your boss off mm -hmm. or pissing a producer off? You know, sometimes conversations like this, we, we call this a crunchy conversation in, um, at Tilly's Life Center where I teach part-time. I teach social and emotional learning to teens uh, in the classroom in, in high school. And this is called a crunchy conversation. And sometimes you have to uh, write out what you'd like to say, like what's important to you about the conversation. And then you can even come up with a way to say it. So you have to kind of, you have to think about if I were to express myself to someone else, and if I were doing it from a place of loving truth, what would that look like, feel like, and sound like? But sometimes that's really hard to do in the moment. I mean, when conflict arises and you're in the heat of it, you can't go, okay, what do I want it to look like, feel like, and sound like? So sometimes you have to have these conversations and think about it first. I've gotten advice about some crunchy conversations I had to have, especially with work. And you have to just speak your loving truth. And you have to- Stephanie, have to that's, that phrase is really beautiful. And I think if you, if you can breathe that in, loving truth, if you can breathe that phrase in before you speak and you speak from loving truth, you know, how, how can you go wrong with that? You can't. Akara, you had something to say earlier, right? Well, I was only going to say that I wondered whether Gayanne realizes that she that that she thinks she doesn't have boundaries, but of course she does. She's just got used to ignoring them and actually abandoning herself to allowing others to get to get away with stuff around her life that is not good for her. And, and I think, oh, I'm fine. Know, what, we all, <laughs> what we all agree is that. It's hard, isn't it, to, to set a boundary or to, with loving truth, which is a great expression, yes. uh, uh, come, uh, just talk about a situation which isn't comfortable, but it, it does get easier each time you do it. Yes. Not for me, and it also depends on who you're trying to set boundaries with, because there are certain people in my life that will never respect my boundaries. And so I don't know, I'm not gonna drive myself crazy and always try to set boundaries around them because it's useless. It's like a wall. So it's like talking to a wall. Mm. So I just know that when I'm going to spend time with them, if I have to, that I'm going to spend limited time with them. And then there are those like healthy relationships I have with my friends, with certain girlfriends where we've learned boundaries around each other. And I know that they are going to hear me and they're going to respect me and they're not going to attack me. But there's just, unfortunately, not everyone is receptive to your loving truth or trying to convey you need to be told or you need to be interacted with in a certain way. They're too defensive. It's true. So, I yeah. would say you push those people into the second row of your friendships. They're right? just always exactly. going to be one, one row out and maybe even two rows out. Exactly. And that's just the way it is. And then yeah. on top of that, the answer is not to mind. Because if they don't have enough- never going to change. 
Yeah, That's and if they don't I, have enough respect for you to respect your boundaries, then why would you want them in your you. circle anyway? Well, honestly. at least in the inner circle. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like you put them in the acquaintance circle, in not in the friend circle. circle you know? <laughs> the yeah. inner. So, okay, um, enough on boundaries on board. Sure. Um, I actually said that. I actually said you that. Said it. Yeah, you said it. Oh. Here's what happened. We were, no, 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 no. We were doing a show not too, oh, like, I don't know. I, I can't, I, you know, time. <laughs> Time is whatever. Oh, and we were doing a show and, and we were in the studio and Mara sort of says, and I'm paraphrasing, can we move on with the topic? I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that that great. Bad. That was so <laughs> funny. Um, I, you know, it's only because, you know what? It's, I'm not really bored. I, I find it interesting. And, and Stephanie, I will talk to you offline about this, but because sure. I have a lot of shit to learn. We have so but, much. But, um, but there's a whole laundry list of stuff that I really want to get to because I really okay, think cool. it's important. I love it. Um, is it dirty laundry? Point, huh? Is it a dirty laundry list? <laughs> How about it just be dirty? Um, <laughs> no, that's, that's in the next two weeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the next right. two weeks. Wait till you hear what we're going to talk about here on Between the Sheets. It's make me blush. Mr. Hitachi will be making an appearance. Number oh, two. Number, not, look, it's not, he's not going to actively making an appearance. Um, Number two, well, maybe he will. Um, develop awareness and practice mindfulness. Before you start, okay. before you start, I think it's really important to define what mindfulness is. And so, again, for me, mindfulness means I'm fostering presence, like, like being present and knowing what that is and practicing presence. Um, it intentional relationships, um, awareness, like self-awareness that we have about ourselves and awareness that we have about our relationships and awareness that we have about others. Okay. So this is part of mindfulness and, um, also peace of mind. So for me, uh, for Aviva, mindfulness is establishing peace of mind. Um, what does that mean? It's different for all of us. So presence, uh, self-awareness, awareness with others, and peace of mind is would be our definition of mindfulness. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Because I don't want to talk about an, a term that maybe people, you know, it's kind of like everybody may have their own definition of mindfulness, yeah. but I want to put everybody on the same page as yeah. to what you mean by mindfulness so we can actually discuss sure. it as such. So being present, I have worked so much on being present in the last two months. Next, I'm going to work on being alone, and I can't seem to be alone. Uh, <laughs> but a big problem with people in America, it seems. Right. But I mean, well, no, I'm just, that was a joke. Not that anybody got it, because I live with two people. I'm never alone. I'm like, I can't, I, well, never mind what I was going to say. But, um, but working on being present, I find that to be very, very important. And it takes a lot of work to literally keep yourself in the present, at least for me, maybe on the, it, maybe I'm, it, it is, difficult. you know, because it really is so easy to sort of, when you're dealing with something and staying in the present, fluctuate to the past, fluctuate yeah. to the future and not really deal with the present. And I think to really be focused and grounded, you have to stay with the facts and whatever's at hand. So if I could stop for a second, we have a call. Sure. You mind if we take a caller, ladies? Great. Thank you. Oh. Hello, caller. Welcome to Between. Hello. What's up? Is this who is it's this? I knew it. Shake it's and bake. You always call at the most inopportune <laughs> moments because we're not going to oh. talk. About, you're not going to say shit oh. about. Point number two. You're absolutely not. You're going to just sit and ramble on. You're so stupid. It's not even funny. Hi, Tanya. Hello. Hi, Tanya. It's funny because I was just thinking that pot is actually what keeps me in the moment. <laughs> and that's Tanya called. How are you doing, Shaking Me? I was going to tell you, I'm. I like to look at the sky and the colors and try to notice something different every time I try to escape out of the present. So my mind tends to wander out of the present sometimes too, and it is difficult, but I tend to look at the different colors of the sky and different colors around me and notice like little 
little bugs that might be around or something that's small. Like, just to be mindful, more mindful of the present. See, look, I donate. That is present, right? Uh, Tanya, you, don't you, are you living on oh, a farm yeah. or something? Didn't I see that on Facebook? You're living on a farm or something like that? I was. And now I am I have 11 women roommates. Ooh. Wow. Are any of them dateable? <laughs> No, they're all, they're all they're all a little bit older than me. Well, that's okay. <laughs> I have no problem Most with that. Most of them are grandmas, and yeah, no. <laughs> Tanya, hey Tanya, how's the dog? Yeah, how's the dog? The dog is brilliant. The dog is brilliant. I just He's love. Good. I have to say, I just love sometimes this technology and stuff because we don't talk to Tanya. But yet we know we're all up in her business because we read the shit on Facebook. <laughs> it's as if we had conversations <laughs> with her like last week. But honey, I love well, I, Congratulations, Kimberly. I actually do talk to Kimberly outside of the podcast. Congratulations on starting the red shop, man. I'm stoked for you. Thank you. It, it'll happen. It'll be about eight months from now, but it'll happen. And it actually Let may me know anything in San Diego. Diego. Well, thank you, Tanya. We love you, Shake and Bake. Thank you for supporting us. You know we love you. I love you, too. I'm I'm watching the podcast. I love all you guys. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. All right, All right, cheers. 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 Okay, Steph, getting back to what the present, being present. (laughs) Getting back to the present. Getting back to the present. Let's get back to the present. Perfect. Let's do it. So Kim said it, too. Kim was talking about the fact that that was presence, what Shake and Bake was talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's, you know what? That poor girl is going to have that nickname till the day she takes her last breath. I am so sorry, Tanya, but I love you, And but it's so fitting. Go ahead. So- you explain to me why that would be, um, it's funny, I'm not a connoisseur of the Molly, is it? <laughs> No, 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 honey. Oh, stop, stop. Let me take this one. Let me take this one, please. Okay. Molly is ecstasy. It's MDMA. That is Molly. Oh, Mara. Marijuana. Mary Bird. Something about 420. I have no idea. It's two different things. Molly. There's three things. Molly's, shrooms, and pot. Do you understand? And don't forget about ketamine. Oh, yeah, ketamine. Oh, and G. We might as well throw G in there, oh, too. Oh, why not, man? <laughs> so what I was saying is, for somebody who's not, like, tight with Molly or Mary Jane, um, <laughs> what I'm trying to find out is I would think that you would you would do those substances to escape. But no. you're saying, on the contrary, Marit, it actually helps you in the present. Absolutely. 100,000%. If I go out to my garden and I smoke pot, it takes me so far deep in that moment. And I'm gardening, I am in that garden. Let me tell you, my feet are in there and I'm That's feeling present. that dirt and it is just beautiful. And it is, yeah, mm. it's in the moment. It's present yeah. and it's like, it really helps me get there. Honestly. But Steph, I mean, but despite- to know, I should try striking up a doobie one day. Yeah, girl. <laughs> oh, you know what? I would have to film that. If seriously, I, that would be, you know, that would be like a, a webisode in and of itself. But Stephanie, besides like pot or people do MDMA or whatever their choice of that keeps them focused and centered, without using substances, yeah. how does one get themselves to be centered to stay present? You know what? It's different for everybody. It really is. Um, a lot of people practice meditation. Some people practice chanting. I used to do chanting for years when I lived in Los Angeles. I practiced chanting and oh man, did it bring me to the present? It was like peeling back layers of an onion. Um, for some people walking, Delicia, you built a labyrinth. So you can practice presence in the labyrinth, right? You can walk it. You can do a walking meditation. And when you walk into it, you can let go of everything you need to let go of. And when you walk out of it, you can take in everything that you want to take in, right? Girl, that's what we gotta do. I love the labyrinth. So there's so many different ways. Yeah, Cara. I got something to say because I just thought of it because it's about you. What? Because my favorite thing to get into in the moment is to smell a flower. 
Yeah. And I just, and as I was thinking about that and how I'd like to say that, I remembered that you gave me a little bag of lavender to put in my handbag. When we were in Nice, because we went to Nice together, nine nine goddesses went to Nice. Wow. Uh, nice, France. Um, and you bought there me a little bag of lavender. And that lavender has really helped me on many occasions where I've... There you go. I kind of I lost it. it and I'm, I'm just close to tears. It's like, I've got my lavender. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it just smells so good. That's a really good way of getting into the moment. Aromatherapy. That's what yeah. it is. And so you find what works for you and feel good. For you. I use incense. I light an incense every morning before I meet with clients or I light one downstairs and it's called eternal treasure. And for me, it just, it grounds me. And I smell it and it instantly puts me in the space and I can put one that love for my bedroom. So there's so many different tools and techniques. You have to try them and see what works for you. Really. So how do people know? So I, I mean, I do the same. I, I burn Palo Santo. Yeah. Um, oh, I love Palo, Palo Santo. Palo Santo. Mm. Um, I'll do incense. Um, I do meditate, you know, but it really took me a while to sort of get, because I think, Mo, I didn't know what being present really felt like or was. And it's really difficult if you haven't experienced sort of being present and being mindful. Um, so it is it is work. It just doesn't come yeah. naturally. I don't want the listeners to think that, you know, like, for example, I used to think for years meditation was sitting there, you know, and trying and just trying to be quiet, not only myself, but just block everything out. But you can't control. That would be like in a in a in a pressure chamber where there's nothing. And I always was very frustrated, thinking I don't know how to meditate. I can't meditate. I am not getting. I I, I hear things, and I realize it really isn't about that. It is being in a present state of mind and to that place where you know. For example, for me, I've now learned to focus on my breathing. Very good, wonderful way to bring yourself present. Thank you. And so it's also. Go ahead, Cam, go ahead. No, it's also, so I, I wouldn't say it's work. I would say it's forming new habits. So yeah. so you start with small chunks of time. And if you, I mean, no one sits down who has never meditated and goes for like 20 minutes and you're in Zen. Like sometimes it's two minutes, right? And, and sometimes it's fine. And you grow those, you grow those little pieces into yeah. something more evolved. Exactly. And Zen and getting to be Zen or quiet or whatever. Quiet doesn't necessarily mean being quiet completely. Right. It is, you know, centering on the breath, doing the focus. And meditation is different for everybody. Yes. It's sort of like, you know, I started and I realized I was meditating, you know, every morning. I, you know, feed the cats, do my stuff, go sit on my front patio. I get up at the crack of freaking dawn anyway. And I sit there and I just watch the world unfold the birds coming out, the sun starting to rise. Mm -hmm. And I'm in this, and I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just observing, watching, breathing in the smells, just feeling it, feeling it. And I'm like, you know, screw it, Gan, you have been fucking meditating. It just doesn't look like right. what the books or whoever the hell says meditating is. That's so right. I do believe meditation is found within yourself in whatever makes you be at that place to mm -hmm. be present. My that opinion. That's a super important point, Gay Ann, because a lot of so many people put that pressure on themselves where they're like, I can't see nothing. I can't see nothing. And it's not <laughs> about that. You know, I mean, I've been doing a meditation practice for years that is a Berkeley Psychic Institute meditation practice mm -hmm. and it is very active. You're always thinking about something. So there's no one right way. And it's super important that you made that point. Correct. I mean, even music. See, I know Stephanie, you and I, um, oh. you know, we're music people. I mean, well, I think I'm we all love music. I, was as things. I think we all love music. And I know that like, you know, it's sometimes, what does it say? Music sometimes expresses what you feel, but you can't express. Oh yeah. And, you know, and so if I'm going through happy things or whatever, you know, I'll say, I'm not going to say her name because she'll start playing, but Alexa, you know, I'll scream that. Cause you know, you, if anybody has that, you say that name, you can be 50 miles from here and she will start talking to you like nobody's business. So but Alexa. I will oh, stop. Don't you say it, Cara. But I mean, it's like, I'll sit there and I will be in a very happy place in the present. And I just say, play this music. 
And it just completely doesn't uplift me because I'm ready uplifting. It complements me to be more uplifted and actually feel it through everything, everything. Uh -huh. And then when I'm sad and I, you know, when I'm sad, that's a whole other story, but I mean, but it really is to me, you know, it's different tools that we use to get present and get centered, you know, like Carol, Carolyn, another goddess sister is watching. She's saying like a hot bath with candles or music. Yes. I think the point here, people is that, you know, you can be present and you find presence in your own way. It doesn't need to be dictated by some guru or some fucking, you know, whatever the hell it is. Whatever it makes you feel is what you're talking gay and you're talking about like a lot of using all the senses. You're talking about taste and smell and touch mm -hmm. and all of those things. And I think that that, you know, a lot of humans aren't in touch with their senses to That's begin right. with. Right. Mm -hmm. And and aromatherapy, all of those things are tools that we use to stay present or get present or, mm -hmm. you know, all of that. Yep. Mm -hmm. I agree. Anyone, does someone have their hand up? I'm sorry. I was going to say that uh, this just happened the other day. I was not feeling like I was in a good, like the best space. And I was working in front of my computer and I put on, I just was craving um, Simple Minds, Don't You Forget About Me. Mm -hmm. And that came on and it just over, it overcame the grouchiness. And I was like, hey, 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 you know, I was really singing to it. And I just think music is just medicine sometimes. It is. Sure. But I think everything, I think if we go through life and see things, anything that we are passionate about or anything that really sort of, I'm going to say turns us on, and I don't mean mm -hmm. sexual people, but anything that really complements us and uplifts us is medicine. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, and it goes back to now self-care. Yes. Make yourself the priority. Yep. Make yourself the priority. And, mm -hmm. you know, I know a lot of us grew up, or I'll speak for me, grew up where, you know, if we said, you know, an accomplishment or something like that, it was like, don't tell people that. They're going to think mm -hmm. you have a big head, you have an ego, you know. And, you know, and, and quite now, frankly, I'm like, fuck it, I earned it. If you call it an ego, yeah, I busted my ass to get where I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of it. And I think that you really need to sort of, you know, take care of yourself first, yeah. you know, and I know I talk a lot of shit because there are days where I don't take care of myself first. Mm -hmm. I put others first and then I get depleted and, and, you know, and I think, you know, and instead of, cause I know I have done this. Um, I've been hardest on myself. I think we're all our own worst critics or harshest whatever that word is, because I can't think of it right now. But I think, oh, sorry, I just stepped on my cat's tail because he wants <laughs> to stay here. Um, but it's just sort of, um, you know, so, I mean, what are the tools, like self-care? You know, we grow up with a lot of people dictating to us about what I just said. It's ego or it's this. How does one, you know, what are some tools to take some self-care besides the meditating and being present? What can you suggest? I, so one of the first things right now, especially again, we're, we're in the twilight zone and, sure. and nobody knows what's going on. Everything is in the unknown. Um, some people are being really negatively impacted right now. There are people that have lost loved ones and that are having like seriously mental health crisis right now. So um, understanding that we're in these like completely unusual times and circumstances. And the, one of the first things we can do um, is show ourselves compassion by like pausing and asking ourselves, like, what do you need right now? It's really, I know this sounds super simple. It's almost sounds stupid. It's so simple. simple. Okay. But it's like, what do you need? And it might be that you bring yourself to a mirror and look yourself in a mirror and say, what do you need from me right now? Okay. Now this works both ways. It works with yourself and it works with somebody else. So this is a great question to have in your back pocket right now, because all of us are going through things. We, we can't even imagine what's happening, um, much less understand that this is our reality. And so we have to show compassion, self-care, show yourself some compassion, give yourself a break right now, give other people a break. 
allow yourself to make mistakes. Allow yourself to have moments when you need to stay in bed and you want to stay in bed and sleep in in the morning. You might need that. So self-care is, first of all, identifying what do I need today, right now? It does good. I mean, I have a habit now of putting my hand on my heart mm -hmm. and actually talking to this inner being. Maybe it's the inner child. I don't know. But like, what do you need today? Like, I, and I love you, you know? Mm. That's very Hoffman. You know, I went to Hoffman, the Hoffman process. That's one of the things that we do, hand on heart. Mm. Um, it's one of our tools. Um, and that's very important. But what you said earlier was interesting because I've always had an issue with this. Standing and looking in, into a mirror, I, in over 60 years, have never really been able to, to see myself in a mirror. Oh, I know no. that sounds crazy. What do you I, mean? What do you mean? Like naked or like what? <laughs> no, um, you know, when people say, look at yourself and analyze and look, and I, it's almost like I, I, I just don't see myself. I don't know what that is. I see myself a little more now than maybe a few years back. But to stand and look at myself in the mirror is a very weird and kind of uncomfortable thing to do for me. That's well, interesting Louise because I, um, when I, I, you know, I lost about a hundred pounds with my Crohn's disease and, I, know. and I, I was like, so I was about, right now I'm about 130 and then I got up to about 280 and when I looked in the mirror, I saw the same person. I didn't see any different. And no. it, was, it was everybody else who saw something different, but I never I think, saw anything Felicia, different. Felicia, no. not to interrupt, but I don't, I, I mean, I think, Cara, are you, you're not really talking about the outside. No, it's I'm not. I, but, really? but that comes from the inside, right? It doesn't necessarily, what I see on the outside comes from my inside, not from my outside. But really? Louise Hay does a... a, a lesson like that where she has you go and look in a mirror and look mm -hmm. into your own eyes yes. and and do these affirmations right and it is uncomfortable cara i get it, it, it can be in the middle. Yeah. One minute. yeah it can be in the beginning uh, you know i i'm gonna liken everything that we're talking about to the first time you go into a gym and you haven't been in the gym in a year okay and you're gonna start lifting weights right you'll start with smaller weights Mm -hmm. And so maybe you just see yourself in the mirror and you go, hello, you know, and you just walk by. Maybe you're not like staring at yourself in the mirror for 20 minutes. Like somebody was saying, you know, you have to kind of ease into it and step okay. into it. Somebody was saying, you know, I think Kim was saying, you know, breaking things down into little bite-sized pieces. It, it, everything doesn't have to be this extreme. You can try it. Let's see how it feels. Does it okay. feel good? Does it not I'm feel good? Does it feel better? And you can just test it. I will. Thank you. We're going to move to number three. Focus on well-being and live a wellness lifestyle. So, so Stephanie. <laughs> this is part of living conscious and carefree is well-being. And for us, we've, we talk about systems for enjoying life, uh, for cultivating abundance and promoting uh, healthier and more, I like to say meaningfully productive living. And that's really different than just uh, productivity because productivity doesn't have to be meaningful. It could just mean like we're in that rat race and we're running the hamster wheel. And, and this is the kind of life that most of us have been living up to the great pause, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys had that, but we're just running at the speed of light. Um, and not thinking about what's in front of us. And so well-being is, uh, is creating a, um, a lifestyle. It might mean you eat certain foods that make you feel good. You start to look at the things that you're doing. And does this, does this mean that I'm feeling good when I do this thing? Um, and, and creating a sense of well-being for yourself and creating a wellness lifestyle. Exercise. We have to move our bodies in order to feel good, right? Yes. It could mean that we are happy. It could mean that we are sad and depressed and, and the different in, in difference in between. So, you know, moving our bodies, that's part of a wellness lifestyle, eating certain foods that make us feel good uh, and participating in activities that make us feel good too. So it means creating a lifestyle in which um, it nourishes you, okay? It enhances you. It makes you uh, to living your full life and a better person. 
But Stephanie, I've, I've got a question. So, sure. you know, in my whole life, I think my life was built around being pretty, right? I was a model. I went to Europe. I was the pretty sister. I was the cheerleader's, you know, quarterback, school friend, all mm -hmm. of that stuff. So I have realized that because I've had three children and I've gained weight and had to lose that weight. And it's, um, I feel better when I don't weigh what I weigh now, but right now I'm not focused on losing that because I'm trying to love who I am inside and not make it external. I mean, I know I'll lose the weight in the next like what five or six months, but you know what I mean? Is that yeah. weird? No. And I, I mean, that's the place to start because you're, you're loving yourself where you are today. You're loving yourself no matter what. And it shouldn't matter what the circumstances are because the only way to get where you want to go is to be where you are right now. And to, you know, uh, I, for me, it's expressing love for yourself. That's self-care. I love you. I care about you. I appreciate you. I understand that you're different. And I'm saying this to yourself. I understand you're different than you were then. And um, because uh, when you feel good, you look good. When you feel good, you don't have cortisol running through your body, right? Because that's a stress hormone and we will release that into our body. And that keeps us, uh, you know, at maybe perhaps at a weight we don't want to be, right? Mm -hmm. and, it, and it and disallows our body from functioning in, in its highest manner. And so it really is about being where you are right now, loving and accepting yourself as you are right now. And, you know, one of the other things I wanted to talk about in embracing change today is, is focus on the outcome you want. Being specific. And, and it's not just about a number on a scale, but it really is about um, how do you want to feel? How do you want to feel every single day? In love with yourself. That's mm -hmm. what you want to feel. That, that was going to be my question. How many of us, and it took me a really long time to be able to do this, but how many of you guys, and I can do it, but how many of you guys can look in the mirror and look yourself in the eye and say, I love you? I can't. I can't. I, it depends on how I'm feeling. Sometimes I'll look, look away and I'll go, fuck this. And then I'll do it. Um, but number four, you guys, it, this is, this is good. Number four, connection relationships are the key to all things. Learn it, live it, love it. It's everything. Uh, relationship number one, the relationship we have with ourself, mm -hmm. okay, which we never talk about in our society. We always, from the time we are born, we're spoon fed, you know, act a certain way, be a certain way, make sure they like you, do this, do that, make up with them, forgive them. We're never taught how to have a relationship with ourselves. Um, I did go through a program called Psy. I don't know if you ladies have heard of it. When I was a teenager, people synergistically involved. And um, it taught me about the importance of my relationship with myself. So I learned this as a teen. But many of us don't get it unless we go through Landmark or some other kind of a program later in life. Or if, if you're blessed with uh, conscious and aware parents. But number one is um, our relationship with ourselves. And for me, it's the foundation for all other relationships that we have throughout our life, okay? And then our connection and our relationships to other people. We have to ask ourselves, are we having fulfilling relationships? Are relationships giving us what we would like? And are we giving our relationships everything we would like? So we have to look at how we are interacting with people in relationships. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, connection in relationships, that's one of our four pillars to living conscious and carefree. Uh, we have written tons and tons of articles about it. And um, it's essential. And like a, a right now in this time, most of us have virtually ignored the relationship with ourselves. Some of us have even ignored relationships that we've had with family members. I mean, um, this is like a whole new ball game. This is a whole new playing field. And it's like we're starting from scratch. 
So we can decide right now um, that we want to have better relationships with ourselves or with others. And then we can say, okay, I'm ready to take steps towards that. Anyone? Anyone want to talk about relationships? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I love being single. They're quiet in the room. Me too. Well, I, 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 I will open my mouth a little bit to it because I've recently you know, got out of a relationship with, uh, suddenly last summer and it was a very difficult situation to reframe my boundaries, bring in those back and to just have us begin to look at myself and my part in what happened and how, how I, I'm, I allowed that to happen to myself. I felt I'd completely abandoned myself and I realized that as soon as I could step away from the crazy craziness that I was in. So uh, I was kind of um, in a situation where I was kind of forced to look in that mirror and say, I love you. Not that I've done it, I and mean, that's my homework. Um, but uh, I, so up until COVID happened, I was at home spending a lot of time by myself, doing work on myself, reading stuff, just, just getting through every day because I was in a trauma. And so I used it, I used the time to really go deep inside. Then the next thing I know, I'm stuck at home. <laughs> with, a couple, mm -hmm. with a couple of lesbians that live here. <laughs> um, anyway, I, hey, I, hold I on. A, Things could be worse because not you love lesbians because you have two true. that live there and then a few of us come over there. So you are the lesbian uh, collector. <laughs> this is the most, this is the most lovely You're like the lesbian hag. The lesbian, the lesbian haven. <laughs> anyway, I was only going to say that, you know, I, I've, I've had to do a lot of internal looking myself and it's been a fascinating and incredibly rewarding journey that I've been on and uh, I guess I wouldn't change it for the world even though it's been shit. <laughs> I, think, I think the whole reason why at least I'll, I was going to say we're here but I'll say I'm here is to learn to have unconditional love for yourself and for others too but especially for yourself and you, I like, I understand all these things on an intellectual level. And there are moments where I really do love who I am. And I, and I can tell myself that I'm a good person. I love myself, but there's other times where I'm too, much too hard on myself and I'm, yeah. I'm putting it all up to like, if I were this way, then I would love myself. And it needs to not have conditions. And I think that's really what life's all about is getting to that point where you can actually love yourself despite what you consider that you don't have or what you consider to be a flaw. Yes. Because I think we have to accept, because we're all different. I think we have to accept ourselves and mm -hmm. learn to love who we are and not try to be what others either want us to be, mm -hmm. perceive us to be. And I talk mm -hmm. this, I talk the talk. And sometimes I'll tell you right now, I do not walk the walk. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes really difficult to sort of embrace that because I'm really good at advising people what to do. I'm that cheerleader. And then I sit there and I go, Jesus, fuck, maybe you should listen to yourself sometimes and actually follow what you do, what you're saying, because you know what to do. You have the tools. We all fucking have the tools. It's just that we sometimes find it, at least for me, I find it very hard to look inward because then you have to what? Unpeel the onion, yeah. uncover shit, go to that space that maybe isn't yeah. so pretty or that's, uh, I won't use the word trauma because that's another term that people throw around, but it's really going, you know, I am enough. It's I am enough. It's exactly true, Gayan. And when you don't yeah. feel that you are enough, what's really, what's really scary is a lot of us fall into the trap of, looking to others for our own validation yes, correct. Mm -hmm. that is so sad because you're never going to see yourself the way other people see you and because everyone's got a different opinion of you and all the, the you know the opinion that matters is how you see yourself yes but sometimes it's so hard to be objective about yourself that it's tempting to look to well, how do you see me how do I look to you? How do I look to you when that's, it's just, it's pointless. Well, and the other thing, how many people here? Okay, uh, this is me, I've done this. 
And because of the goddesses, I swear, I, this, I don't do this anymore. When someone pays a compliment to you, Take instead it. of just saying, thank you, thank you. You go, oh, I'm not that pretty. Oh, right. I'm not that this. I'm not yeah. that smart. I'm not this. It's like, you know, and, and, and seriously, all my goddesses many years ago came down on me for that. Mm -hmm. And that just say, thank you. Accept it. Embrace it. That is me hard. crazy when people do that. Well, the words that, that well, we're, that's why we're not dating, Jalisa. Is thank you, I know, which is really hard oh, to say. Oh, oh that's that. Yeah, that's another I one. Know. Yeah, yeah, that's so. I know. But so analyze it, and it makes sense. It's true. Blanche from the Golden Girls when they we, the guys will say to Blanche, you know, you're very charming, and she goes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Number five. Wait, wait, one second okay. before you go to number five. Okay. So. We all have the tools, but we don't use them. Okay, so again, easy. You got to think about it for a second. So if we if we all practiced everything we knew, our lives would be so sweet. So it's about practicing the tools. When we're in the deepest, darkest, when we're having the most difficult time, taking the moment to breathe laying down and uh, doing a guided meditation if we can't do one that's just quiet, listening to music that relaxes us, uh, lighting some incense when we're, again, so it's about, it's about practicing these, you know, one thing at a time, what works, what didn't, and also looking at what worked in the past, because all of us have experiences of success and for some weird reason, you know, we know everything about every mistake we've made. We know what we were wearing. We know who was in the room. We know what day it was, what time it was. It was dark. It was light. We can describe it completely. But when I ask you about your happiness and your success, I'll, a lot of my clients struggle. A lot of people struggle and they can't, they, they don't remember it. It goes by really fast and we don't pay attention to our success. Like we pay attention to our mistakes and our failure. And so conscious and carefree is a shift in perception. Hey, everybody. Thank you for watching between the sheets. We're not done yet. But ah. if you want to call in, it's 323-524-2599. Pull up a chair and join the convo. Delisha, do you want to say something? Or let me move on to number five, because I'm telling you, time is a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, then. I don't have anything to say. Right. <laughs> number five, up level by identifying your passion and purpose. So this is another one of the pillars for success uh, with conscious and carefree up leveling. And um, some people might think this is just like climbing the ladder to success or making more money or, you know, all of these, uh, you know, in uh, superficial bullshit exactly outside. And so up leveling could be that you want to find your soulmate up leveling might be that you want to have, uh, more nurturing friendships. Uh, up leveling may be that, uh, you know, for me, I have a, an album that I want to finish. That's up leveling for me. So each of us, you know, identifying what we are passionate about, um, what our gifts are. This is a big part of living conscious and carefree. Identifying our strengths, our passion, our gifts, so that we can live our life in service with those gifts. Is then we live a fulfilling life instead of just like, okay, it's a satisfactory one. It's good enough. I'm doing a good enough job. This, this is okay. And, and versus waking up in the morning and being excited about your day and what you have to give. I know Gan, you have a lot of, you know, purpose with your work. And um, so that, that's what, that's what up leveling is about. Alicia. One of the things that um, I found affected my happiness or un lack thereof was mm -hmm. not being able to figure out what my passions were, not being able to figure out what exactly made me happy. So do you have suggestions mm -hmm. for people that are kind of in that stuck boat? They can't really figure out like, oh, I feel kind of dead inside because I know I felt that way for a long time. So, I mean, you could, you could start by, and this is, and I, I'm a coach. I have mastermind groups. I lead circles of, and <laughs> she's waving. Cara can speak to that. Cara, what did, how would that, uh, how would a mastermind group help somebody with their passion and their purpose? 
talk it through with people you know and love. Find out what they think about you. What do you, what what is their approach to your talents? Um, I love my group because it just it brings us it brings us all together to love each other and help each other be the best person they can be. What sort um, of group was this that you're referring to? It's a mastermind group, and every week there's three or four of us on our call. We get together and. Stephanie runs this group and we, we look at what we did. We said we were going to do last week. We set goals. We, we explain where we went off the rails. Uh, we support each other. And it's a fan fantastic. I don't really know where it comes from. Stephanie, did you invent this? Yeah, how, 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 how do you find your passion? So, well, so I, I will go to two things. So Delicia, one of the ways that you can start by looking at what's important to you is you can look at times in your past when you were doing things or with certain people and you felt like extreme joy, like what was happening. Another way you can look for it is to think about um, people will always tell you you're good at something. People mm. throughout your life, you'll look back and they'll say, you know what, you're really good at that. You always have that. Or it might be creating what you did out in your yard. Well, right? that I look found my passion so, there. So when I say that, look at you. You're, I found you're my passion there, let me tell you. <laughs> like a Christmas tree. Yeah. So I'm telling you, and so uh, for us to say, well, it can't be this and it can't be this. It can only be this one thing. We're, we're defeating our purpose. And so you have to look at what's bringing you the most joy. Maybe you're the labyrinth builder. I don't know. <laughs> face when I say that, you might be the labyrinth builder. And, and I see it's you. It's so cool. <laughs> you're in ecstasy. I don't know. Maybe you go around and you build labyrinths for people. So oh, this is that something awesome. that we, we could, you could explore with a coach and a coaching relationship. Or this is something you could explore in a mastermind group. You could come to the group of people and say, I really want to find what my passion is now. I want to find how I want to serve right now, how I want to earn profit right now. And, and you can go through that process and, and it, it's a process. It's not just something you go, Oh, okay. Right. I, I know what it is. It's a process. How does one find a mastermind group then? Okay. Let, we can tell, go offline, but we only have like 15 minutes. And I think the next part is really important. I think this is, because we've just explored a lot of stuff, yeah. but um, I'm going to, you know, Stephanie wrote this quotes by Socrates. Mm -hmm. And it's the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Mm -hmm. And she, we have some points for embracing change. Change is scary as shit. It can be. Yeah. As fuck. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that, but I figured you'd add that. Um, <laughs> but change is so scary sometimes. But that, of course, is living in fear. And that doesn't serve us. So there are 10 points. And let me, allow me to just read them because we only have 15 minutes left. Allow me to read them quickly. Sure. Um, points for embracing change. And then we can have a dialogue. Sure. Number one, focus on the outcome you want. Yes. Number two, ask for help. Number three, listen to your intuition. Please. Um, four, trust your decision making. Five. Enlist support. Six, act as if. Mm. Seven, identify what has worked for you. Eight, allow it to happen. Nine, study role models. Ten, take the leap of faith. So change. It's inevitable that through our life, at least for me, my biggest growth on my journey has come from pain and from change. Mm. And fear at points has held me back to hang on to something, the familiar, the pattern. So I understand the points for embracing change, Stephanie, but how do you, how do you advise people to overcome the fear or the hesitancy or whatever else their excuse because it truly is an excuse uh, have you heard of the uh, have you heard of a term uh name it uh, to tame it nope name it to tame it 
So most of us back away or hide from our fear. And it's really important that we identify what it is. What is it? So when it overcomes, you, you become the observer and, and instead of being in it, and again, what does this take, Gan? This takes courage. Courage. And you're lifting your, the, the weights at the gym. It takes practice. Practice. It's holding your muscles. You have to be courageous, yeah. right? So uh, in order for us to, to accomplish this, we have to be able to identify what is it? What is my biggest fear? What am I so afraid of? Say it, write it down. Because you can't, you can't overcome it until you've identified what it is. All right, so I've got a challenge for the ladies right now. I'm putting you all on the seat. Let's take that question. What is your biggest fear? Cara, don't wow. overthink it, say it. I need a moment, really, I do. Okay. Sorry. Alicia. Heights. Heights. Okay. Mara. Heights. Failure. Failure. Kimberly. Agreed. Failure. Wow. Cara. Not reaching my potential. Mm. More than failure. Okay, mine? That, that's a good Anyone one. Anyone want to guess what mine is? Embarrassment. 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 Being alone. Rejection. Rejection. Ooh. I'll have that fear, Gan. Oh no, it's mine and mine alone, Mara. <laughs> well, I just meant I hear you. Your guys' fear was so deep. Mine's like heights. Oh, and mine's heights too. <laughs> oh, I I so got fear of heights. Oh no, I had fear of a lot of shit. And this is true. And I'll never do this again. Um, ayahuasca. I will never do this shit oh, again. Oh god, I am so scared of that. It, it trust me, it's not fun. <laughs> Um, but the, I have to say, and I always say this, I think I went in it. I was so in fear of the unknown and, and I've never done shrooms or any of that stuff. I've never been on any of those psychedelics cause of like, you know, too controlling. Um, and I just did it thrown in and the whole fucking eight hours I was in a ball and all that, that sort of, I guess, hallucination or whatever the hell that, that, that state of conscious subconscious is was dealing with fear. It was the worst fucking eight hours of my entire life. And when I walked out of that, I didn't have fear of heights. I didn't have fear of making myself vomit after I drank. Um, I didn't have fear of a lot of stuff, but- so it, so it helped, it helped. It helped, it helped. I but I, I, but I mean, but seriously, but still the thing that sometimes holds on and that I still hold on to is A, the fear of um, like rejection and, and and there's another one, but I can't remember right now because I'm menopausal. So anyway, um, so, um, so Dan, let me ask you a question, okay? That's Stephanie. What is the opposite of rejection? What would you say is the Acceptance. opposite? Okay, so what do you really want? Because because the first thing of embracing change is focusing on what you want. So let's let's ask, what do you really want? If you're afraid of rejection, what would you like instead? You know, and that's the stupid juxtaposition is I have it. What, I have what, it. what is it? Say it. It's being accepting, accepting for my passion on what I do. The podcast, the getting on the live Facebook page, the people who actually, you know, um, engage with me and, 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 and sort of like I'm on the journey with them. It's being accepted to actually do, be who I am. Mm. Acceptance to be who I, who I am. And do you and reject it? And being rejected because of, of what I'm not and what others want me to be. Are you accepting of who you are today? Right now, yeah. I mean, right now in the present, I am. But throughout sometimes, depending on situations, you know, I waver. And I think that's with everybody. I think with ever, all of our fears, I think sometimes we could stand there with confidence and and just take on the world and overcome it. And then there's just certain Achilles heels that just, you know, and then it's like- You, you know, mean you're human, Gan? Oh my God, I didn't Oh my know. God, you should, oh, God. You're human. You're I hate to be human. I want to be, I want to be superhuman. Flesh and blood. Right? I know, but- Who the hell's singing? Who the hell's singing? When did this fucking show turn into a musical? Jesus I'm gonna, Christ. I'm gonna, okay. Say, but I so I give yourself a break. Give so you yourself we should all give ourselves a break when it comes to the fears and stuff that we have. Just like just let it go. I mean 
I, it depends on, and it depends like, on- Like Mara like Mar says failure. Cara, I mean, Kim, what was yours? It was also failure. Failure. I mean, Cara, I mean, like how, like how do, like if it's fear of failure, I mean, that's- Well, that's easy, but what if it's fear of success? Because I also have that too. Ooh. And that actually is what I was going to say, Mara. Is it really a fear of failure? Is it no, fear? It's, a fear, right. it's a fear because you know what? If, if I think about really becoming all that I want to be and the chance that I might actually achieve that, then what? Because exactly. it's like, what then, you know, and, and how would people react to that? And would I still be accepted with people? And mm. would there's a whole new slew of problems then. And so it's just, you know. And, and, and I understand that and I feel that. And so many people... Uh, identify with a fear of failure when it really is a fear of success. Yeah. I, I know. Isn't that funny? Yeah. yeah. So, and I, I'm, I'm willing to bet who else said failure? Kimberly. I said Kimberly. failure, but the thing for me is like, it's not, I'm not just talking about career failure. I'm talking about relationship failure and friendship failure. And uh, there is a failure beyond, uh, gosh, it's, it's deep. I, I used to say it was a fear of abandonment. I used to think that that was my major fear, but I think it's failure, but across many levels. And it might be connected to abandonment. I mean, and that's, that's like a whole other show we could write. <laughs> and that's, that's also pretty universal. I mean, I, I knew I, I grew a fear of abandonment also on, um, my, yeah, my dad left the house when I was like eight and, uh, and that was really hard. <laughs> so I had many, many years, um, also Car and I had, um, previous marriages, um, and, and that was definitely an issue. So, yeah, I, so, so, um, name it to tame it is one of the ways that we can move forward. And also looking at people that have been successful. If you know, people in your life that have been successful overcoming something, go to them. On the same breath, I fall into definitely envy and looking at people that I'm like, why can't I succeed? Why can't I just do it? Because they're doing it like comparing, comparing and falling short all the time. That's a bad trap. You don't want to get into that no. trap. No, no. And, and so it, it, maybe you, you, it's, it's, uh, it's fine to say, I'd like to do what they're doing or, um, you know, be what they're being. And, and then you can, you know, read about it or, or work towards that as your, your goal. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, but so for me, uh, it's like when I, I was sitting at a blackjack table in Las Vegas and somebody at the table gets a blackjack. And so in that moment, you can be excited for them and happy or, you know, God, I wish it was me. I wish I had gotten blackjack. Right. So there's it's so there's, much better to be excited for them. It's so much better. Cause you know, if they got a blackjack, it's going to come around to you. Eventually. We're going to get yeah. the blackjack. Right. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's going to just come around the table. It's going to come to you. And, um, and, and that's the type of energy that you want to put out. That's you want, you want to, right? You want to have people that support you. And, and so you would want to put out energy that was loving and supportive of others because, you know, it's, it's, it's not about competition. It's about collaboration. And uh, there's enough space for all of us to be successful in our own way. <laughs> if we think that that's just, we're just, all being really greedy and we're taking six feet around each of us. <laughs> I take 10. I'm sorry. I'm a little more greedy. You can have 10. Just I take no, it, baby. I Thank you. Believe it or not, we've got four minutes and oh Kurt's going to kill me. But we, Stephanie put together some mastermind questions for us. Okay. Um, and um, I want to do one. I, can't, I know we can't do three. Um, but the one that I like the most um, is... What is the greatest obstacle... Oh, I was hoping you were going to pick opportunity. I was going to do that. And then I changed the obstacle, but I'll do it. What is an opportunity being given to you now that you're not acting on? I'll repeat give, it. Give what? them both questions and let them pick the one that resonates for them. It's not good. It's going to take too long. No, we'll choose which one we want to answer. All right. Seriously, it's my show. Everyone get it? <laughs> Jesus, fuck, we've got so many alphas in here. You have your own fucking show, Stephanie. I know. So what is an opportunity being given to you now that you are not acting on? Or 
What is the greatest optical obstacle standing in your way? Um, Delisha. Actually, you guys are going to be surprised. Um, it's Crustica. I decided to not do it. I decided I didn't want to work for my brother and uh, he's given oh. me plenty of opportunity with the restaurant and with the film. And I decided for my health, for my mental being, that I am going to retire with JP Graphics and that I'm going to retire with somebody who appreciates me, loves me, knows my worth, treats me right. And I'm going to retire simple and healthy and happy. And that was a huge opportunity that could have made me super rich, yep. but I don't want it. I want to be happy. Happy is better than rich sometimes. It really is that. Uh, so, Alicia, guess what? What? Found your passion. I did. Right. I there did. You and you know what? I'm creating my oasis for my retirement now here at my home. And, and we'll all what come this up COVID there. Done for safe me. and ready. We're, we're, I'm, I'm moving. Um, all right, Kimberly. Can you read the question again? Ah, damn it. Um, one, <laughs> what is an opportunity being given to you now that you are not acting on or- Okay, I'll take that one. All right, cool. Okay, my the opportunity is actually COVID. And I'm gonna tell you this opportunity is being alone in my home by myself. Um, it's an opportunity to actually do a lot of the stuff that Stephanie's talking about. And sometimes I don't take it. You know what I mean? I don't take it for all it's worth. And, and I could. If I could, it's the opportune time to actually be like the tiger that's preparing to leap mm. when it's done. Are you complete, Kimberly? Am I complete? Oh, you're not a goddess yet. You'd understand it. Mara, <laughs> <laughs> wait, in two weeks, we will. Um, what is an opportunity being given to you now that you are not acting on? Or what is the greatest obstacle standing in your way? Question number two, the greatest obstacle, which goes right off, piggybacks off what Kim was saying. The biggest obstacle that's standing in my way all the time is me. Aww. So, no, listen, I mean, uh, what I'm trying to say here is that there's always opportunity uh, if you want to find it. But then there's getting out of your old way, getting out of your own way, which is where I'm at. And I am always the biggest obstacle standing in my way. So if I can just get myself out of the way, and that <laughs> means conquering fears, that means taking risks, even when you don't know what's going to happen. Right. That means wanting to feel good when you get up every day, then that would definitely change my life. Okay. Mm. Stephanie, which one are you going to pick? Because you get to answer too. I get to answer too. Uh, you didn't think I was going to do that, did you? <laughs> I'm ready for it. I love it. Um, for me, it is finishing my book right now. That is the opportunity that I am, and I'm actually taking off the third season of my show uh, so that I can <laughs> pivot and focus on completing my book because that's super important to me. It's pulling at my apron strings right now. And um, yeah, I... Uh, I have a lot of people saying, where's your book? And uh, I'm, I'm really tired of recommending other people's books. I'm ready to be able to offer my own. So that's the opportunity that's being given to me right now. And um, it's now or never. So I'm going to finish it. Great. Okay. All right. I mean, I suppose one could say COVID because it's holding us all back from something. But it, that in itself is actually keeping me in a place where I'm doing a lot of things, which I'm really enjoying. So it kind of isn't really the answer. I guess the answer might be more that I had an opportunity to go with the flow, go with the people, agree with everybody, go into fear. And then this, in this particular time, for me, I'm not doing that. I will not go into fear. Mm -hmm. I don't cover myself in rubber gloves. I will not be wearing a mask. I don't go out much. I just do it my way. I'm just going to enjoy every second I am at home in my beautiful, peaceful place. And the world has gone insane around my ears, but I ain't going there. So I, I could, you could say that I'm a bit of an iconoclast and that's my choice. And that's a hard thing because a lot of people don't like my view. Um, but I'm okay with that. Just stay 10 feet away from me. I will. <laughs> I, I definitely will. 
Thank you. Thank you. But I don't go anywhere. It's okay. What, Kim? Did you answer this yet? No, I was trying to avoid it. <laughs> oh. Good job, Kim. Um, what's the greatest obstacle standing in my way? Um, overthinking every fucking thing. Um, the greatest obstacle is by overthinking, overthinking, over analyzing, just over, over. Um, because I have, I am artistic, I am creative, I am passionate. I have no problems in tapping into any of that. Um, it's sometimes overanalyzing stuff to the point where I exhaust myself yeah. to then be counterproductive not to move forward because I've put so many scenarios in my head that it paralyzes me. I'm exhausted. And then mm -hmm. I'm like, I just can't do this. Mm -hmm. And then I don't. Um, so yeah, so that's my greatest obstacle, which is why I really have begun meditating a lot more. I've got my, a friend of mine gave me a meditation cushion and I sit there and I've got this little space and I put my muse too, because I like that. It's a fun little game, but it gets you to, it gets me to my place. And now I'm guided meditations and listening to fucking birds and you know, whatever <laughs> the hell that does. It's sort of cool. And I like it. And I'm a gadget person. Um, and next week in two weeks, you'll be seeing some of them. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah it's um that that's what it is it's, it's that overthinking and over processing because it's instead of just going with the flow you know again it's not being present sometimes so that is my greatest obstacle i guess is overthinking and not being present trying to sort of do it which sometimes comes into self-sabotage so you know that's what i'm working on and but i have to say since covid um i've actually shined I've actually sort of like risen to the occasion um, and, and that's great. And, and, you know, I, I don't have a fear of success because I am successful mm. and I know that I will be, I will continue yeah. and continue to achieve because I have that passion and that desire. Love it. And I don't accept fucking no from anybody. Yeah, so, baby. So there we go. Welcome to Between the Sheets. So I just want to say thank you, Stephanie Dumont. Thank you so much. Um, you so say your last freaking name. Um, Stephanie, again, is the co-founder of Conscious and Carefree um, on Awake TV Network, 52 Weeks to Living Conscious and Carefree. Yeah. She's going to write a book. She's an executive empowerment coach. Where can people find you if they want to take this mastermind class? Where, yeah. what, what tell us? Wanted, yeah, first of all, the, go to our website, Conscious and Carefree at the letter B and the word carefree.com. And you can sign up to get weekly inspiration. Um, you can see you know, I've done interviews with a, a ton of influencers, including Gayanne. Uh, you can get inspiration, motivation. There are uh, hundreds of articles on everything we talked about today, mindfulness, well-being, connection and relationships, and up-leveling. So go there, have a feast. If you're interested in a mastermind group, you can find out on the website or coaching and, um, and go to Awake TV or um, I'll be posting soon on Conscious and Carefree our episodes with some of the greatest influencers with so many tips and wonderful information about how to succeed in unconventional ways. Thank you. Yeah. Cara, where can they find you, sweetheart? Are you talking to me? No, Cara. Oh, oh. Oh, Facebook, uh, Quora, uh, Instagram even. I'm Mom. around. Or, or, or here at my wall doing my mosaic. We'll be there. You know we will. Oh, we'll yeah. I love it. Thing, of course. Kamara. Oh, I am on Facebook and Instagram, Mara Shane. Thank you very much. Delisha, what are you up to? How's your, how's your blog doing? Or what's the blog, I should say? You know, I, I kind of have uh, the whatthehealth.net, but I haven't really been too active just because I sort of had another flare and I didn't want to, I, I got to get back to it, but whatthehealth.net. Cool. Maybe, maybe this will be motivation for you to get back on there to find other passions. There we go. Kimberly Sanchez. Uh, my website, uh, Beachside Biscuits, should be live in about three weeks. I like it. You make the best food ever. I cannot oh believe gosh, your food. I love biscuits. Thank Tara, you. Tara, 
Cara so loves teacher. when the lesbians come over. Why, Cara? <laughs> Why do you like when the lesbians come over to your house? The best food and the best tips. <laughs> I don't know. Your cleavage was looking pretty good tonight, Cara. <laughs> so everyone, thank you so much. Thank you, all my co-hosts. You know, drinking and silly is what we are. We actually are practicing an embodiment what Stephanie teaches. That's right. We thank are conscious. Stephanie. And I love you. Ever. I love all of you. I love you, the listeners. And I am in gratitude mm. to each and every one of you for you know listening to the show hosting it, sharing it, our street team. I appreciate all of all of you, two, three, four hundred people sometimes watching me every single night on my life, like that, Facebook live chats. I go on every night at 7.30. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. I, I It's just fucking phenomenal. Um, you know, if you, it's just, it's crazy. I, I, I'm doing my Between the Sheets happy hour every Thursday at 6 p.m. It's a sense of community. And I feel, I, you know what? I feel that that's what, what this COVID has risen the occasion that I am a connector. Mm -hmm. I love social. I love bringing people together. Mm -hmm. And I really want to make sure people have a place to go that is consistent and to build a sense of community. And I think that's what my purpose is during COVID. So mm -hmm. and it's not like, again, I'm not a guru, but that's what I feel what draws me because you know what, that's what I need. So what I need brings forth the people that need to join us. Follow me on, follow the show or me on Instagram, QTE Brat. Please like our Facebook page, Between the Sheets Podcast. All the old shows are up on YouTube, Between the Sheets Podcast with Gay and Bruno. It has to have my name because otherwise it's a porn site. And um, <laughs> in two weeks, we're on the first, this show is on the first and third Friday of every month from 7 to 8.30. And um, if I can figure it out and if I can get guests, but fuck it, I'm like, if there's no guests, we're going to do this anyway. We're going to talk about kink. We're going to talk about S and M. So oh. We're going to talk about dom, dominatrix, submissive, masochist, Boy. pacifist, oh. porn. You know why? Because sex is fun, and it is. Fuck it. You know we can't have it. Some of you who are husbands, God damn you, you're lucky. Um, I have Mr. Hitachi. <laughs> I'm marrying him after this, um, but I'm just saying, you know, we've had such heavy and deep and spiritual shows. And I think by June, everyone is going to go probably more insane. So I thought I'd have something that was kind of fun, but educational um, and uh, bring your toys, ladies. Um, Cause Margaret Cho, you know, Margaret Cho was great in introducing us to new toys. Um, but, you know, but there is, it's not only about a sex show, it really is a psychology and stuff behind all of the kink world and S and M. And there's probably other things, um, in that, that I don't practice it all the time. I'm a warrior. I love to see it. I love to experience it and I've experienced some of it. Um, but it's not my world. But it's, <laughs> You're going to have to have a drink. Go ahead, have a drink. <laughs> TMI, TMI. I mean, there are other people, by the way, there are other people on this that I'm not going to call out that likes it the same way I do. Kimberly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so everyone, um, we're, you know, thank you for joining us. Um, it's, we all love each other. It's all in good fun. Um, I can't wait to see all my ladies um, in the next two weeks. Stephanie, you're always welcome to come back. Oh, I'd love it. Thank you. Thank you for your insight. I just wish, you know, if, if we continue to do it, the show would be three hours long and I wouldn't have a problem I because I know it's all difficult, but I love to talk. I know, shocking. But I want to thank everybody. Thank you, Kurt, for always running the boards. We appreciate you. Thank I will you. see everyone back here in two weeks. Um, and um, who the hell knows what that show is going to be? But I'll tell you, it'll be really high for ratings. So... Uh, <laughs> So thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Be safe. Be well. And as I always sign off, namaste, everybody. Namaste. Namaste. Love you guys. Thank you Love so you. much. So nice to meet everybody. Thanks, Steph.